This Reefer Roto is confusing me just a little bit. This is E3D's new six shooter and it's tiny, but while they promise that it's the most power dense six shooter on the market, in the last testing video I did, it started skipping at feed rates that are below what you would need to run a modern printer at full speed. E3D did the right thing and they reached out to me and wanted to know how they could reproduce my results. And the hypothesis was that the Trinamic Stealth Chop Stepper Driver, the one that's actually installed in here right now, was holding back the Revo Roto. I love it when companies actually take unfavorable results to heart and try to work them out. But of course, just speculation really isn't good enough. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything this time around. So I went back and retested with three different stepper drivers, three different current settings for each one, different accelerations, different temperatures. And in addition to the E3D Revo Roto and the reference, the E3D Hemera, I'm also throwing in the LDO Smart Orbiter V3.0, which is eerily similar to the Roto in so many ways, but the Orbiter uses less gearing and a higher current motor. So let's see which of these combinations comes out on top and whether it actually was the stealth chop driver that is limiting the Revo Roto's performance. Because I've already done the test, as you can see, and honestly, I don't think it's quite as easy as to just point to Trinamic and say, this is your fault. Let's check it out, right after a message from today's sponsor. Behind me, we've got part of my 30 kilowatt solar system that I planned myself. And while that was already quite a lot of work, once you have to plan out larger solar farms or industrial scale roof mount installs, the hand waving I did for the couple panels here just isn't gonna cut it. PV Case takes in location and terrain information and automatically creates optimized layouts, 3D cabling and bombs for your next large scale ground or CNI roof mount solar project. And it's all running inside AutoCAD for that familiar engineering touch. Check out PV Case at the link below. The way I'm comparing these extruders is relatively simple. Um, I've got my test setup right here that pushes a specific length of filament through a hardened at a specific temperature, specific speed, acceleration. And while it does that, it measures the force that the extruder manages to produce while pushing the filament. And that gives us a graph that looks like this. It's how much force was applied at any time during that run. These runs by themselves are just really characterizing the hot end, but I've programmed this setup to keep doing runs while increasing the speed each time and leaving all the other settings the same until it detects that the average force it measured during a run is lower than the last run, which I think is gonna be a pretty good indicator of the extruder skipping or you know something slipping in here. Unless, of course, the Revo hotend that I'm using somehow is managing to quantum tunnel filament through the nozzle, but I don't think that's happening. I can chuck up a whole bunch of different extruders on this setup, and I actually did a whole bunch more in the last review. Uh, many of these would usually have their own built-in hotend, but I'm using a Revo Micro for all these tests to keep it fair. So with the test I'm doing for this video, I've added a whole set of new variables that I can cycle through. And I've started to realize that if I do every single combination of every parameter, I'm gonna be running this tester for close to 100 hours straight. And I'll be wasting way too much filament for this. I'm already using uh, Dust Filaments B plus stock, which is just a, a transition spool essentially. But still, that is good filament that I don't just wanna turn into curls. So the smart thing to do is to run a trial run and see which of these parameters actually changes anything in the output. Here's the data from that. One thing that is immediately apparent is that this is just way too much data. In total, this was 604 test runs, so with a different uh, extrusion speed, a different acceleration setting, a different temperature, and I already stopped it not going the, the, all the way to 250 degrees Celsius as I had originally planned it. I stopped it at 240. And again, it shows the power of exponential growth. You're like, hey, let's just test seven different accelerations. Let's test five different temperatures and you're pentupling your effort every time. And what used to be like 15 minutes worth of, of testing, all of a sudden is five hours. So this is how I tear into this data. I've got my pivot table up here, and then I'm graphing the results down here. It's the same as in the last Revo Roto video with the extrusion speed on the x-axis 
and then the correlating force that was required to reach that speed on the y-axis. And you can see for the Himera, over all the runs, really it didn't struggle up to like 20 millimeters a second, and then, you know, we're starting to slip or skip. So of course, this right now doesn't make any sense because it's averaged out over all the different temperatures and accelerations that we tested. So we can actually split this apart and, for example, split it by temperature. This actually is a very pretty graph right there. Um, we're seeing that, you know, as we increase the temperature, guess what? Force drops. Uh, it is easy to extrude the filament through the hot end. This is good data, but I don't think it teaches us much because that's something we already know. Of course, we can quantify how much our force drops as we increase temperature. This is something that's more specific to the filament and the hot end. And those are two things that are really just an artificial load we're putting on the extruder. I think we can do one temperature. I think I'm going to go a bit lower than 200 to sort of simulate the higher force that a 0.4 nozzle would take. This was all done with the 0.6 high flow. And then I think 240 is still going to be good for a high speed and low force run. So we can reduce the number of temperatures that we're testing from five to two. Let's see what uh, acceleration does. Again, this is over all temperatures. So we also need to set a temperature filter for this to make sense. Uh, let's do 220. And now what we have is these lines, each one represents a different acceleration setting with everything else staying the same. And Honestly, there's not much difference. The more gradual acceleration, at least in this case with the Himera, doesn't seem to help it uh, reach a higher absolute top speed. Just like with the temperatures, I think I'm going to go with two accelerations here, um, one at 100 and one at 10k to sort of do a realistic 10k acceleration for the extruder and a lower one just in case, uh, for example, the Roto or the Orbiter just have too much of an initial jerk to get up to speed. That should have cut down the total time all these tests are going to take down to a much more manageable overall time effort. But yeah, now it's just uh, more testing. Of course, that was all Hemera data, and that's a pretty vintage design at this point. The Revo Roto and the Smart Orbiter V3.0 are much more compact designs that seem to converge on sort of a common feature set and build size, and really, the Roto is a tiny bit more compact and a tiny bit lighter, but it has all the smart features as a little optional add-on attached to the top, while the Smart Orbiter has them built in as an integral part of the main body. I'll be testing with the TMC2208 in Stealth Shop, as I did last time, with the TMC2209 in Spread Cycle, and a classic Allegro 4988 in whatever weird mode these run. Because while well, on the Trinamic drivers, you can directly set the motor current with the reference voltage, and the driver will do its best to supply the motor with that amount of current, the A4988 doesn't actually have a way of setting current. You'll find guides online that tell you how to calculate, I'm, I'm missing fingers for air quotes, so calculate the current, but frankly, they're wrong. Because the only thing that the reference voltage sets on an Allegro 4988 is the momentary peak current at which the internal PWM chopper driver turns off, after which the current starts dropping through the motor, uh, and then after a fixed time, the PWM driver turns back on, rinse and repeat. How much the current has dropped in that fixed off time depends entirely on the exact motor you use, and while that is something that you can absolutely calculate, it's not quite as trivial as multiplying a couple of numbers together. So, in the end, the current that the 4988 will actually supply will be lower than what you think you're getting. How much? That depends. I treated it as setting the recommended peak current for the motor, so 1.41 times the RMS current, but I'm also including runs that use 20% more or 20% less current, so just keep in mind that the results from the A4988 all have a little less current flowing through the motor than the results from the Trinamic drivers. So let's have a look through these results and uh, I must say spreadsheets and pivot tables like 
They're surprisingly useful if you use them right. Uh, this was all just done in Google Spreadsheets, but it is a lot of data and it's like five dimensional. So I can't show you everything at all. It would be very confusing. It would look like this. After spending a significant amount of time just digging through this data, here are the answers that I, that I found in this. First of all, is Stealth Shop really a limiting factor for this? Yes, but really only on the Roto. Um, the Smart Orbiter 3 is already influenced less by Stealth Shop and the Himera really doesn't care. So these seem to behave quite differently on each of these drivers. There is still a hard limit of 12 millimeters a second of filament feed rate on the Roto specifically. All these other ones didn't have that hard limit. What I thought was happening is um, 12 millimeters a second is about 32,000 steps per second. I am running an 8-bit board on here, which uses an Atmega 2560. And there is a step rate limit on Marlin on these older boards, and that is 40,000 steps per second. You know, if you assume like this one's maybe at 16 megahertz, that would line up very well with that limit that we're seeing. So the easiest way to test that is you actually reduce the number of steps that the, the CPU, the microcontroller has to send out to the driver. The way you can do that is you change the driver from 16 times microstepping to eight times. So for the same amount of pulses that the microcontroller sends, the stepper motor actually turns twice as much. And we saw basically the exact same results. I mean, almost none of these results changed in a meaningful way. So that is something that I can safely say is not the issue. But what seems to be the issue is the voltage I'm running at. This is a 24 volt system, which means these drivers have 24 volts to work with to push that into the motor. If the motor doesn't need that much voltage to push the current through, then they chop it down and they actually just give it less average voltage. If the motor is easier to drive, then they need to use less of that voltage reserve. Um, if it is harder to drive, then they need to use more of that 24 volt and apply it directly to the motor. Now, we have a situation here where we don't really care about the current a motor gets or the voltage it runs at. We really just care about its output power because pushing filament at a certain speed at a certain force gives you a certain power. You could actually calculate that very easily. But the thing is, because power is voltage multiplied by current, when you have a low current motor, like in the Revo Roto, which is just 360 milliamps RMS, then the driver will need to apply quite a lot of voltage to get the power out of the system. So on the Roto, this motor runs at a much higher voltage than the Smart Orbiter or the Himera, which are both 0 0.85 amps, 850 milliamps RMS. Plus, as a stepper motor or any motor really spins faster, it starts acting more as a generator and it starts pushing against what the stepper driver is trying to do. So this is a motor that both is geared down very far and is a 0 0.9 degree motor, basically acting as if it's turning twice as fast. That means that this is a very, very voltage hungry motor in the end. And I think 24 volt just isn't gonna cut it. We can actually test whether voltage is a limit for this. Like I said, I did all these tests at minus 20, the recommended and plus 20% current on each of these drivers and each of these extruders. The Himera is sort of the odd one out because this guy was not skipping at the motor, it was skipping at the teeth. So the filament was slipping through the teeth uh, at a ridiculous about 10 kilograms of force that we were seeing here. So increasing current here didn't really help in the amount of force that we saw, but reducing it sort of lowered some limits on this extruder. On the Smart Orbiter 3, you know, you could increase the current and it would push harder. You could reduce it and it would push less hard. It was very sensitive for reducing current. Increasing it gave us a roughly proportional gain. So this one is running in a current limited state and the stepper driver is quite happy pushing it. But on the Revo Roto, there was very little gain of increasing the set current. Why? Well, because the stepper driver is already working as hard as it can to push current through the motor and just telling it, hey, push harder, it can. not There is simply not any more voltage left in the system to drive this thing harder than we already did. So the Riva Roto was 100% skipping in the motor. The teeth were very good all the time. Um, but yeah, unless you go higher than 24 volts, you can't run this motor any harder. But the thing is, 
we can't just run more voltage on this system. 24 volts is about the max that we can do here. My board has capacitors on that that are going to explode past 35 volts. Uh, the 2209 actually caps out at 28 volts. So going to 36 volts or, you know, 48, which would really be awesome. It's just completely out of the question. Nowadays, you can get boards that run at 48 volts comfortably and some Trinamic stepper drivers like the TMC 5160, 2160 or the 261, those all go up to 60 volts, which is quite a lot. That's, that's quite spicy if you touch it. Even the good old TMC 2130, that was good up to 45 volts. So that might actually be a much better match for the Revo Roto. And that voltage issue is the same reason why the Revo Roto was doing especially poor with Stealth Chop enabled. The thing is, the Smart Orbiter 3 wasn't bothered nearly as much, and Hemera really didn't care whether I was using a spread cycle or a Stealth Chop driver. This thing just, you know, it, it just cruised right through. So originally, I didn't really consider that Stealth Chop could have even been an issue because, well, I didn't have any issues with it so far. Overall though, the thing is, the Smart Orbiter 3 generally outperforms the Revo Roto in a normal 24 volt system with normal drivers. The Revo Roto might shine if you have a 48 or a 36 volt system, but because the Smart Orbiter is a much more normal, higher current uh, setup, it needs much less voltage to run happily. The Himera still outperforms both of these by a mile, almost to a level to where it's probably questionable if you ever need this much torque or this much pushing force on an extruder. And in fact, E3D already compensated by introducing the Himera XS, which has a much smaller motor. This thing is quite overspecced. For comparison, what I'm seeing with the Revo Roto is about 300 millimeters a second of print speed of linear speed if you have a 0.4 nozzle and about 100 millimeters a second of linear print speed with a 0.6 high flow. The Himera, twice as much, the Smart Orbiter 3 somewhere in the middle, but a bit closer to the Roto than the Himera. This is probably good enough for general use. It might limit your retract speeds, it is quite close there, but still, I, I feel like E3D not working with LDO motors on the Roto, that was a bit of a mistake because in my opinion, they ended up with a stepper motor choice that is quite suboptimal overall. And especially at the price point, stuff like this just shouldn't happen. For a comparable setup between the Smart Orbiter 3 and the Revo Roto, which means a high flow nozzle, a hot end, and uh, you know the extruder with the smart features, this is 320 bucks, includes the hot end. Again, the Smart Orbiter 3, depending on where you buy it, you can get it for like 80 to 120 bucks. If I were to buy it, it would be 120 euros. That includes a genuine CHT nozzle as well. And overall, that's like, that, that makes the E3D Roto Revo ridiculously expensive, especially considering it has a flaw. Unless you're hooked on the Revo ecosystem, it's still very hard to recommend. Even, you know, having figured out that Stealth Shop really doesn't work with this and other drivers perform better, but still, it's so expensive. E3D could have avoided this by going with a different motor, with one that is maybe not a 0.9 degree or uses a little bit more current. It would not have impacted the performance of this at all. In fact, it would have improved it. And to be honest, I would really like to see a revision to the Roto that uses a more normal stepper motor that works better with a normal setup using a 24 volt supply. In any case, I hope that clarified some of my findings with the Revo Roto, but I do want to know from you, does the fact that there is simply less headroom on the Revo Roto bother you at all? Or do you just look at the speeds you're printing it and whether it's enough for that? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to everyone who is supporting the channel, either by supporting me directly or by just sharing and watching the videos. Thank you. As always, keep on making and I'll see you in the next one.